Hey, peoples, no long introduction. I just want to jump off into this video from the last two videos that I made. Yes, they're strong. Yes, there is some force behind it because it needs to be said. But let me share some things with you of what happens to you spiritually and that'll start happening to you physically when you purposely stay in places that you do not belong. Because from the last video I made mention, and no, this is not an attack towards my DM. No, this is a, since you want to watch my videos, I'm going to need to tell you what's really going on. Because it's like, I fear for what's going to happen with you. Because you care so much about what others say. Ain't nobody telling you to drop what you do. I support you in whatever you do. However, I won't support foolishness. And being afraid to do what God tells you to do, to me, is foolishness. I've been in that predicament. Here's my story. And I have more to come. When I kept running back to my son's father. And I knew I shouldn't be there. Just, you know, for the sake of having a kid. Because some people will trap you and snare you hard behind a kid. And it takes extra effort to get away from a fucking demonic ass fucking person. Especially if you have kids with them. And the reason they were so. Look, we're going to get into that in another video. Let me just tell you about what I dealt with going back and forth to my son's father. Y'all see the size I am now, right? Y'all see the size I am now, right? Y'all see the size I am now, right? I ain't got no bunch of whatever. But let me tell you something. Being somewhere in a place where you ain't supposed to be will not only suck you dry spiritually, remove your light if you have one. And anybody, because there's times when people who have gifts and abilities, their lights can be dimmed or taken away. Should they stay in fuck shit too long? And like I said in the last video, the last thing you want is for God to leave you. Because then you'll really know what rejection feels like. But I digress. I was so depressed being with my son's father. Which I was forced to marry. Which is why I couldn't marry my twin when I first met him because I was still locked up on paper. The enemy knew and he sits out whenever he wants to go for a certain person. He'll go for you when you're young and strategically set up shit to trap you. And the only way you're going to get out is to listen to God's instructions. Now, I was sitting there in that shit for when it came toward closer to the time that I knew I was supposed to get away from this man. God told me if I stayed in it, I was going to die. And I was already deteriorating physically. Let me explain. To my twin, when you saw me and my hair was cut really, really short and it was curly and black. And you saw how skinny I was and you asked me, was I okay? I was that close to death when you saw me that time. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you don't play with God. You don't play with God at all. When God tell you to get the fuck away from something. And you don't get the fuck away from something, God will let you fucking die in that shit. And the only thing that made me leave my son daddy that last time was knowing that, or the time before that, that let me know, God was like, I, 
I will take your life in this. See, God is serious. I was that close to death. You know why? Torment by demons. Being with that man. I could not eat. It had been like a month or two. That last month or two that I was there. The bones in my neck were showing. You could see my breastbone. You could see my ribs. You could see, like, I was so skinny, I had a thigh gap. And I don't even have a thigh gap now. I was, like, half the size that I am now. I was dying a physical and a fucking spiritual death. There was no light in me. Because God will take your light until you do right. When you stay with people you ain't supposed to be with, you chose the evil instead of the good that God want to give you. And you saw the bones in my face. I look like you saw I couldn't eat. I would try to eat food. I would feel nauseous. The demons would not let me eat. They would not let me sleep. They would not let me do anything. And God allowed them to attack me because I chose to stay somewhere because of my child. And it almost killed me. You remember, think back. How skinny. And you said, are you okay? And I was scared to tell you then, but God was like, I take your life, you stay in this. And it would be a slow, painful death to where, okay, you want to stay over here? And the kids are feeling your emotions. If they're attached to you, it was to the point my son would be, you all right? You all right? My son's father's family thought I was pregnant because I was always nauseous. They thought I was pregnant because I was always sleepy and having fainting spells. I was so fucking skinny. I could barely drink water. I was fucking deteriorating in the worst way. I had this foul smell on my skin. It smelled like death. And there was nothing physically wrong with me. It was just dying a spiritual and a physical death. Because of where I chose to stay. Knowing that the love of my life was somewhere else and I was never supposed to be with that person. And you've overstayed your welcome too long. I see how small you've gotten. And the reason I'm speaking so passionately about what I'm saying is the suicidal thoughts, the feelings of getting your life right before you pass, that is God allowing the death angel to come and break you down until you do right. I don't want you to die. So I'm going to hope and pray that God is going to send a real prophet into your life. Somebody that don't give a fuck about telling you something just to soothe you. But to tell you the for real, for real. And they might not know certain terms but somebody gonna come to you and tell you that you're in disobedience and god is allowing now you can have look god is allowing the things that are going on around you to go on because you're not listening you're getting answered prayers yet you you want to be oh i rebuke satan from my home God is not going to stop this woman from doing what she's doing to you. She can't do anything to me anymore. God say, nope. I'm not going to let her touch you. Her little affiliates that she goes to. That once tried to help you because she really thought that she was going to successfully trap you. But then when she found out that there was no love there to begin with. 
that's when she started pulling back her help. You are in a war that you don't even know that you're in. Because you're rebuking your answered prayers. Which is rebuking God. The same person that you're praying to. Make it make sense, love. Make it make sense. Because if you die, then God has no choice but to rewrite a contract and give me somebody else. That would, that would make me happy as you made me or happier. However, I didn't think that was possible. But God got me to accept you and still love you and love you more. Even though we went through the stuff we went through. We tit for tat. So don't never sit there and be like, you can't love somebody because you've never gotten over someone that you thought loved you. I never stopped loving you. We were young and petty. You cheated on me, I cheated on you. Only thing was, you saw the dude. I never saw these bitches. Take that back. On the site that you posted, it was a thing, it's like Facebook, but it's only like just pictures. I don't remember the name of the, the thing what it is it's like I don't, it's not snapchat either it's a thing where it's only photos and you might can put a caption but it was like uh i don't remember the name of the freaking app but you had the pictures on there for when you went to vegas when your mama told you to go out and live your life don't you know before all that happened Meeting somebody like you brought me close to God and made me more thankful that he sent somebody in my life in human form to demonstrate his love to me. And that's the most powerful love you can get in the world. I don't want anything to happen to you. But God said at this time, there's nothing that I can sit and say and do other than just, just love you through whatever and preparing me that you're going to be, how do I want to call it? You can get PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. From certain things in your life that trigger you to feel certain types of ways. You don't think I would feel some type of way too? But God has already prepared me that, hey, he's been through enough. And should he decide to do right, you're going to have to be patient with him. And love him through this process. Because... It's not going to be easy for you to come from a chaotic home into a place where there's love, into a place where there's peace. You think it's not going to do something to me to make me think that every time you leave out the door, I'd have to wonder. Because, you know, the devil could play with my mind, too. You know what I'm saying? I would have would say shit like, and I already know what the fuck. So God is telling me to straight ignore it. He already told me all the tactics Satan was going to try to use anyway and said, ignore it. Let's make me think, oh, he leave out that door. You ain't going to see him no more for a while. That is not the way that it's supposed to be. When you truly in the army of God, as you like to say, you're going to go through some hard times. To teach you some stuff. And when you refuse. To grasp the concept of what God is trying to show you. That's when things started happening more. More pressure. More pain. It's like God is trying to squeeze. The bullshit. Out of you. Basically removed all the things off of you that could deaden your emotions so that you feel it. 
to the point that you have no choice but to release. Because when we were together before any interferences, you were the only man that I've ever truly loved. All others, I try to make do. But being with them somehow before I met you, I knew that there was someone out there just for me. So I got tired of dealing with fuck shit. And I genuinely, genuinely went to God and I asked. A couple months later, I'm nudged to go to the store when I'm tired. And then I met you on the way. And anybody after you never held any type of significance to me in my life. Dick is dick. But love is love. I never loved you for your dick. Your dick was just a bonus. I loved you for your spirit. I still love you for your spirit. I love you for how you are underneath all the bullshit that's coming up against you. I'm not your enemy. The people that you're up under who are cuckooing and woo-wooing you to think that this shit that's happening to you is okay are your enemies. When people genuinely love you and they see that you're going through deep, deep deep spiritual attack they could have helped you but it's going too far to the point that god will not let anybody else intervene god is personally dealing with you and he ain't gonna stop until you come to the knowledge of who you are and stand up and be who you are satan been trying to keep us apart because he knows a lot of shit will break with us being together in the same fucking room. Don't you know? I don't know how much you know about spirit spouses, but don't you know? I was given one since I was a baby by my father. And I'll get into that story. It is no longer with me. But you're the only man that this thing was afraid of. Whenever you are around me, that spirit spouse never bothered me. That spirit spouse would be like, oh, I'll be back when he's gone. And knew just how to come in and get me. You have a power in you that you do not know. And the reason you're so spiritually tired is because God is not going to give you the strength to put into something he never meant for you to have. And Satan's biggest triumph in this whole world is women who trap men with babies. And that's why women still do it to this day because it works on gullible men and it'll always work on a gullible man. You can be a father without being attached to a demon. You think women gonna stop trapping niggas with babies? No, they're not. The strong ones don't fall for it. The ones who don't know the power they hold and possess, they're the only ones that fall for it. So why should Satan have, why should Satan stop doing what works with you? Why? You got to put your foot down and fight. Find a goddamn warrior in you. I love you and I'm out.